Yeah. Let's pray for the word today. Father, Lord, we just thank you right now for this moment, this opportunity that you've given us to hear what you've already said before the foundations of the world. And so, God, we're not ministering a sermon today. We are giving them some substance of our progression. So, God, I ask right now that you be with me in this moment as I share what you've given me 12 plus years ago. And God, as we now, those that have connected and carried it out, and those that are even seeking on mission, God, I pray that this word and this information and this impartation be one that would inspire, excite, and ignite something on the inside. And so God, do let the words that will come from my mouth, the motives of my heart, be acceptable unto you, God, for you are my strength and my redeemer. I also honor you for every listening ear in this room, online, and God, even those that will connect with this later, I pray that they have an ear to hear what you, the Spirit of the Lord, has to say to the church today. And so, God, we are grateful and thankful for your word today. Why? Because it's your word that makes us new. Come on. It's your word that teaches us about you. So make it clear and make it plain. In Jesus' name, would you shout real loud, amen. amen. Come on, give God one of those praises you got deep down on the inside of you and so real loud and proud we're gonna even though we're talking vision we're gonna line this thing all the way up and so at this time let me see them what hey man put your bibles in the air let me see them i do a check i check them all right and if your neighbor need a bible tell them that usher's got one for you if you need one and so we always encourage you to carry and adhere to the physical bible if you can um, we love to have it uh, with us, and, and we also have some for you. Um, I think we got them in English and Spanish, and also for those of you ever need Spanish interpretation, um, or, or in, yeah, interpretation, that's the proper term, um, we have that available uh, for you at any time, or if you have a child or a youth right now that you need to get out of here because they're messing you up, just go ahead and send them on out to our amazing children and youth ministries. Amen. That's 18 and below. They gone. They gone. That's gone. Y'all ready to get to it? Would y'all give our ushers an amazing hand as they go ahead and readjust um, themselves today? Wow. Here we are. Um, it has literally been, uh, today is the 25th of September. And on Tuesday, the 27th will be exactly 13 years ago that God, Jesus, excuse me, Jesus, I did not expect that one. Give me a second. Man, my eyes be sweating. I'm a crybaby. I don't know. Y'all know I'm a thug in, in, behind all this stuff. I did not. I did not expect that for real. Jesus. It didn't happen when I was writing it. So, Jesus, these eyes are just pouring. All right. Woo, Jesus. 13 years ago, Tuesday, the Lord imparted this vision on the inside. I, I literally, from June, the first, July 1st through September 27, in 87 days, I was given the task, it was, it was a church task at the time, to read through the entire Bible. So we was reading somewhere around 10 to 13 chapters a day. And so in, it was a 90-day Bible reading, and it was able to be accomplished in 87 days. And so on the day after finishing the last part of Revelation, I got divine revelation. I was literally working behind the camera, driving a church van, teaching little kids in children's church, back and forth into the teen church, got coloring papers over here, books over here, 
serving hospitality donuts after church, running, driving a church van, picking up people for the 745 service to bring them to church, take them back home, pick up people for the 1045 service. This all happened in the middle of this moment 13 years ago. So, so, so literally, it's crazy. That's why I probably got crazy. I'm like, Jesus, I was sitting in a, a media room <laughs> 13 years ago in two days. So, so God laid these words, literally, and I did not know what it meant at the moment, but I wrote it down. And the words were, to be a progressive church that embraces, empowers, encourages, come on, y'all, and equips who? For Now, everybody that is a disciple here and that can, and, and, and can talk can say that. Test them. Go over to the Children's Church and ask them three-year-olds what the vision is. They may not have all the full understanding, but they got it on the inside of them. They got even movements that I love. They got the church here, and they got signs, the progressive and embraces. I mean, it's just amazing how the children's leaders have shared with them the importance of it. And some people ask me, like, Pastor, why is that so important? You know, because the awesome thing about this is that I was still sitting in a media room driving a church van, picking up people and serving God at that level when he decided to tell me something. Wasn't looking for it. The last thing I ever thought I would be doing was pastoring. Like, who would want that? I tell people, I'm like, who would want this? Like, you got to be crazy out of your mind or have a crazy belief in God's word to really want to do this. I know it looks good sometimes, y'all. You know, it looks like, oh, man. But you, this Sunday moment does not compare to the ministry that it really takes and the vision that it takes to do the things of God. And I want you to have this great understanding because I didn't have anything or have any understanding of, about what is taking place until God wrote these things down. And I feel that the kids over on the other side is the same way. They hear it, but not have a full understanding, but they will eventually walk into it just like we are standing in it today. Crazy. And so the only people that heard that vision initially was me, and then I shared it with my wife. And I, I was sharing with her. I said, you know what? I, I think God is calling me the pastor, you know, and, or, or, or the lead somewhere in some form. And I was used to her saying, no, nah, what's up? No, you know, I, I, that was my hope. That when I told her that, it would be an immediate, no, you crazy, go get back in that camera room and do what you will be doing. And she says, says me, hold on for a second. Let me just pray about it. I'm like, come on. Like, you just usually just tell me no in two seconds. But today is not that day. So about two and a half, maybe three weeks later, she came to me and said, I believe you have been equipped. Your heart for the people, the things that God has inspired you to do, I believe it's time. Amen. Amen. And so I shared that with them and then I shared it with my two children. That was my first church, four of us. And then I, I, I patiently, I did not share this vision with anyone while I was still under my last pastor. I went into the office and shared it with him, and it, 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 it didn't go as well as I thought. And I'm not here to say anything or any out-of-pocket out of thing at all but it wasn't received the way I would assume it would be. And so I went on and I served in ministry for another couple of months until he released me. Then I shared with people what I was about. I didn't go behind the back. I didn't say, hey, let me tell anybody else what God is sharing with me. Hey, I'm about to leave and if you, if you unhappy here, Some of them have got some of y'all like that. I was obedient until the day. And so I shared that because after doing all of that, God shared this vision to be a progressive church, and it began January 3rd. We birthed the church in the Holiday Inn. 
um, 16 people gathered with us that day. And the rest is just the story I'm going to share in some areas today of where we are, and not necessarily where we are, but most importantly, what I've learned. You know, because you can see something and you can live life and never learn the lessons that life meant to teach you. So you never grow into the leader that God wants you to be. Because how many know leaders have to learn how to listen? You know, because this vision has done something because when I say, I shared y'all the little details about all of that, it's because I heard what God said before I met any of you. In other words, I didn't start rock face center on the God's command and saying, hey, y'all, what y'all think I should be doing? I heard some very vivid instructions, and I shared with the people for four weeks before we started the church, this is what I heard God say do. Now, if you want to do this with me, then we welcome you into fellowship. And that's why we don't have membership. We have discipleship. It wasn't something because Sam Club have membership, but we have discipleship. Discipleship is a disciplined Christian that remains disciplined. No, see, see, you have to be in front of somebody to let them know you for them. How many know that sometimes I can show up on church on Sunday and I may not see half of the servants that serve me? But how many know they serve in the master and not the pastor? You know what I'm saying? Because they're serving vision. And people, I, 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 I travel, y'all know, I, I've been on all kind of boards, and people have asked me, you know, how you do it. And the only thing I can tell them is that you have to establish a vision. And I talk to pastors almost daily. And they, I, one of the first questions when they ask me, how do I do things? And I reply with the answer, what's your vision? Tell me your vision, and I can tell you where you need to be and what you need to do. And so I'm sharing this today because I want you to hear this. This is a very slow moment. I think I got enough time to share as much as I can. And I hope that if you don't understand something, that you will go back and rewatch it if you need to understand it. But and I don't want to insult the intelligence of those that are already partners. In other words, if you're solid, rock solid here, you already been taught from me by at my desk some of the elements of this vision. So I don't want to reiterate that particular portion. I want to bring all of that understanding into this moment. Because vision, what is vision? We hear it all the time. We hear it in corporate America. We hear it in so many other arenas of life. But let me make some under, let me bring some understanding to this because that's all vision is, is a level of understanding about what God is trying to show me. Really, that's all it is. Like, like, like vision, to see it and write it down, I have to develop a level of understanding of what I see so that I can now place it in the now so that it will be words that would not change in situations. How many know since the first day, September 27th of 2009, when this vision was first written down, it has not changed one word in, the, in 13 years come January. Not one. I have not seen that I got to add something to it. I haven't gotten even, even a notion to rewrite it. To say, you know what, God, I need to go back and fix something that, 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 that need to be reworded to make this. I even had nobody even come to me and say, hey, pastor, you know what? I think we need to rewrite that. Bit. I done been in churches like that. I done been there. And I share this because I need you to hear this vision. It's the ability to think about a plan, a future plan with the imagination that is connected directly to wisdom. So I don't just imagine fantasies when you're saying I, I'm having vision. You imagine, you got, you, you got an imagination that is not influenced by your emotions. It's an imagination that is influenced by the wisdom of God in your life. I can tell you this like I share with you all the time. So many people get into position, but persecution and problems will always show whether or not you got to that position prematurely. 
When things come, because if you ever get somewhere, if you ever accomplish anything for the Lord, there will be things that will come up against everything that God said about you. I promise you, if you're ever pursuing God's purpose for your life, and this, I'm going to talk about it before, because sometimes we can have vision and it scares the life out of us. It scares the fear, not of the Lord, but fear itself. I can tell you, man, when God, when God told, can y'all imagine, I get this vision September 27th, and after I get this vision, the Lord tells me to quit my job. I have not worked on any one job since the day I birthed this ministry. I haven't had no side hustles. No, 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 if this don't work, this is what I would do. Not, not meeting all day and coming home and, and war out trying to talk to church folk. God said, if you're going to do it, I need you to trust me. And I'm going to share this because there's a difference between vision and faith. But they work together to accomplish the same goal. Right. See, see, we got vision, and some folks got faith with no vision and vision with no faith. And so you'll never see the things of God become accomplished in your life. Because can you imagine? I got a wife, I got two kids in daycare. That's why it took her three weeks. Because it was like, you know what I know? And, 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 and I shared this story, I made a combined income for three years of $18,000 combined, that was $6,000 a year, as a senior pastor, raising a family, sowing what I wanted to see. I'm sharing this because it ain't just insight. It's some faith connected to this thing that then produces something out of your life. They say, I just ain't see it. I just, because I meet people all the time and they say, I love to have all that. If I had that, I do. I'm like, it ain't about this stuff. Like, 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 what you see is in results. <laughs> like, you ain't imagine nothing. You see everything. Vision gives you the ability to imagine it with wisdom, to write the plan in the now. That allow you to perceive future presently. So when you arrive there, it won't be foreign. See, when you got vision, it gives you a future so that when you arrive there, see, see, success won't be foreign to you when you are used, when you're used to having vision and trusting God. Now, I'll share this because God has done so many things throughout these last 12 years in ministry, but I need to establish some things because it ain't, it ain't just what you see. It's a mental image. It's an experience of seeing something or someone in a dream, a trend. It's a supernatural image imagery. And I can see it. When I see this vision, I, I remember, can y'all remember, um, um, and I, I'm sharing some stories. I'm going to get the scripture, but I, I got to talk a little bit. Y'all remember um, seeing this building before you saw it? I can remember in July of 2015, I believe it was, I, I showed up with our architect and our attorney. And on that Sunday, I, before I even talked about it, y'all haven't even heard me talk about a progressive project, building anything, buying a building. We were still over there in what we call now the event center. And it was on that Sunday, it was no precursor. I said, hey guys, this is what God showed me. Anybody remember that Sunday? Was it the picture of all of this? The sanctuary, the, the children area, what it would look like? Before we had a dime. <laughs> See, a lot of times when people are waiting on money to move, that's not faith. When God shows you a vision, Jesus Christ, it becomes a supernatural imagery. They say, God, this vision is so super, it got so many impossibilities to it that I need for your super to connect with my natural so I can see what this supernatural image, and so what happened was I had to write it down, draw it out, sketch it, and say, this is what I saw. This is what I visualized. Not, oh God, okay God, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna move and shoot from the hip along the way. Can I tell you, 
that what I saw didn't come with, didn't, didn't come with ease? When they told us we got to cut this concrete and put six inch pipe through here and it's going to cost us $150,000. I'm like, oh, Jesus. You didn't tell me that. Oh, you can't use that electricity in there because you're going to put 18 units on top of that roof and, and, and the power grid you got out there won't hold it and now you're going to have to pay $210,000 to upgrade the electricity. I ain't even got no walls up yet. I'm like, God, why you ain't show me all of that? He said, I showed you the image. When I showed you the image, now you're going to have to work your wisdom. And that was the craziest thing. And so as I move forward, it made me understand even more that vision is the mental picture of the future you desire. It's more than just a goal. It's an embodiment of our hopes, our dreams in a particular area that gives us a picture of what has not even happened yet. And that's why I'm sharing it because sometimes people think this has happened. And that's why I have to stop every year. Every year around this time, I stop and I share this particular sermon, this particular perspective, because sometimes you don't know. I have a person walked up to me the other day and say, Pastor, I don't have, I came here, but I don't have a clue where y'all come from. I'm like, let me share. Give me, give me, every year I come back to this moment and I share with the world and those that are connected that we should not get complacent, that we should not get stagnant. That he who began a good work will only complete it at the day of Christ Jesus, not yesterday. That we got to keep it going every day. And so as I move forward, I see that word to be a progressive church. Can y'all just bring it up on the LEDs for me? I just want to see it because it's going to drive me into this moment. Because vision gives us a much larger picture of this ministry and also our purpose. But it also simplifies us setting goals and reaching them while we are handling the problems that come along the way. You can take it down from the middle right there. Just keep it up beside me. So as we talk about to be a progressive church that embraces, empowers, encourages, and, e and equips disciples for Christ-like living and service, spiritual vision. And so when I talk about those definitions in this detail, today what I really want to discuss is the importance of spiritual insight. The importance of having spiritual insight. I, and briefly, those accomplishments or those things that you I just mentioned are not any way brag or boastful. It's to show the blessings of God that he has a promise to fulfill in our lives when we stay true to what he's called us to. So when I look at that word, to be a progressive church, it means to not be digressive, never plateauing, always moving forward with purpose, always keeping what the mission of God is, embracing. I share it all the time that our goal is to be embracing and not abrasive. If you are an abrasive person, you have not embodied the vision of this church. Amen. If a person is mean and obnoxious, don't give them an excuse. You should not have to be apologizing for anybody that serve here. Amen. If you work with somebody in ministry, well, you got to get to know them before you serve with them better. They in the wrong position. <laughs> and they have not embodied this. That's why I can discipline the way we do. And say, if you ain't nice, move out of the way. If you want to usher, you got a mean face, you can't be nice, sit down. And you can say I'm being mean, no, I'm following vision. Because if you're not embracing, you're in the wrong position. If folks walk in the door and you act like you don't want to be there, sit down. Because vision going to move forward. Because sometimes folks will get in your way. With, see, an abrasive person will deliberately put themselves in the way of this vision. See, that's why I need y'all help. Can I say, somebody say, I'm going to help you, Pastor. See, what? Well, I need your help because, because if you run into this, it can easily make you walk away from this vision. But I need you to have the understanding that that person ain't with them. 
That's why I put the first word, because embracing not only allows you to embrace people, it allows you to embrace ideas, change, progression. Here we, we you know, I, I have the, we, it gives me the ability as your pastor and the authority of God to say, hey, you know what? The way we was doing things before, it ends right here. Without, oh, we always done it this way. For 10 years you've been doing this, Pastor. Why are you going to change it now? Because you got comfortable there. That's why. It has plateaued. It has not progressed. Empower. I realize that I ain't got to get here to turn everything on no more. Hey, I mean, that's a... I, I can remember starting this church for the first year. I used to have to get here four hours early to set up the sound, put up equipment, do choir rehearsal, sing, <laughs> preach. Y'all remember them days? Who was here? Amen. <laughs> Singing. And so folks had to get empowered. That means to put power that I thought I had. Because there had to be a point that I had to say, God, you know what? I can't do this. You gave me vision, but I can't make this happen and see what you shown me. So I want to thank God for the opportunity and power. And I share this because also encourage. Somebody shall encourage. It's the ability to put courage in you. It's to make you know, it, may, it makes you not afraid to walk in your faith. How many know it took a lot of courage for me to leave my job and start this church with no money? How many know I ain't missed one bill in my house? See, I had to put God to the test. I had to say, God, you said you're going to supply not some, but how many? See, because I followed his word at his word. He was obligated. I said, I can't see, I can't do what you saw, what you showed me in this place and doing this other stuff all day long. I said, but, but when I do this, there is now a responsibility that I put on you, God. So it's a courage. Courage allows you to do something, I say this, that you are afraid to do until you are no longer afraid to do it. How many know you can work scared sometimes? Yeah. Oh, this has been a, I, can I, I know God ain't given us a spirit of fear. That's a whole nother context of scripture. But I done got, I done had a whole lot of scared moments. Well, I didn't know what was going to happen. Who was going to be there? Where the money would come from? But my hope wasn't in things. It was, my hope was in the word. It was in the hope of God. And that's why I have to understand this because spiritual insight, the importance of it is because vision is not just something that I just have in my body or just within myself that does not have a spiritual connection to it. And so when I think about spiritual insight, vision in itself is spiritual insight, but it is also the capability God has given us to connect to the spiritual realm. Okay. We quote scriptures like those things that be not. Come on, y'all finish it. As though they are. In earth. As what? As it might be. Meaning that what I need in the earth is already is. Is that proper term? Is already is? What you need in the earth is already? What you need is already mine? Like, like, like when I'm operating in vision and faith, I have the ability to tap into the spiritual realm and connect the spiritual realm to my natural and begin to see things that are just crazy. It brings our future into my now. Somebody shout my now. Spiritual sight and faith, I said earlier, are different, but they work together. Faith is hope for the unseen and acting on that hope or belief. 
So, so we talked about this before. Faith is acting on what I believe. So I don't just have faith and I don't do nothing because faith without works is dead. So when I believe something in faith, I begin to act on it. I don't just wait for it to happen. I begin to make it happen. So faith is, in definition, not just the substance of what we're hoping for, but it's the action behind us and what we believe. Now check this. Faith for that self is the unseen, while spiritual sight or vision is the ability to see that which you have faith for. Okay. It's like going to the hospital, getting a doctor's report, and they tell you you have cancer. You see it, they show you the MRI, they show you the CAT scan, they show you the tumor, and they show you all the evidence, right? They show you that. But faith and vision for your life says, I see this, but I just saw myself, because in this life, you ain't had kids yet. You may not have seen your grandkids yet. And so God will start showing you your grandkids bouncing on your lap. Oh, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Like, 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 he'll show you, you're like, God, why are you showing me the house and I live in this apartment, but I just got this diagnosis that said I got a certain amount of time. It gives you spiritual insight to say, you know what? I'm seeing something, but what I got vision for, this problem don't match it. Oh, what I'm saying? Because, see, I got faith, right, for healing, but I got to see myself walking around with healing. Still coming and dwelling and, and say, God, this is my future. And so this future that I saw does not match this report I'm receiving right now. See, spiritual insight and just saying, faith, God, I got faith, you're going to heal me, and I'm waiting on my healing. It's saying, God, I got a mental picture of what this healing looks like. It does. I'm telling you, man, you got hope for your family, your, ma your, your marriage, your children. You got to see your children back in the house. You got to see your marriage already right. You got to see those job promotion already there. Sometimes I told y'all before, you got to go sit in your boss's seat when they're around for you. won't get fired now. You got to somebody go sit in that seat, turn around all the way in it, and say something that you would say if you was the CEO of that company. Start declaring that thing, and so you can get a picture in your mind so you can go back to your job or what you're doing and say, God, I done got a glimpse of that thing. Now I know how to act till I get it. See, I know how to act now. Why? Because faith is what? Acting on what I believe. Some of us ain't got our act down. We walk around when I hear. If I told y'all some of the problems I deal with with 9 o'clock, by 9 o'clock in the morning, you probably be like this, Lord Jesus. I don't know. I'm gonna handle this thing. I start. I, I learned. I said, God, I gotta look like this, cause I saw us with limitless income. Oh yeah, see. Yeah. How many know we ain't got to build no more ministry? Yeah. We got enough facility to do anything we want to do in ministry, yeah. and we all want to spend the money on it. Yeah. All we got to do is the work now. All we got to do is do what God has purposed us to do. Now, look at this. I want you to turn your Bibles real quick to Proverbs 29. I know I'm going to get through all this today, but um, I'm always casting visions. But I want you to see this scripture because this is what I've learned over the years. Just simply, I'm just talking to you because every year I got to come back to this place to just reiterate the importance of us having vision. Proverbs 29, very familiar scripture, but I want to share with you something um, that is significant in my life as it relates to um, the revelation that we call vision. I look at these words all the time to encourage, equip. We always equipping. The Lord told me this week, um, last week, um, to prepare every servant in this ministry to lead anyone in altar call. The usher, the children's church worker, the cafe, I don't care if that person holding that sign out there. If you walk in here broken, they, 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 right at their feet become an altar. Amen. And I'm going to train you. And then I'm training all the leaders this week. Uh, I, I just wrote a 30-page uh, training to get you on all the areas of what it is to seek God and how to lead people to Jesus. That means somebody walking out office, the, second, the, the receptionist, don't have to call for a pastor to come out and pray for this person that's in the lobby because we get it all the time. They'll be equipped. 
Because I see, as I, as I see vision, I say, okay, God, there's a gap right there. And so there's an equipping that needs, because everything that guides me is these. There's an equipping that's missing. Why did that person have to call somebody else when they're a Christian and they kind of, not that they didn't know what to do, they just thought that maybe somebody else is better qualified. How many know God has already equipped all of us to do the work that he's purposed us to do? And we got to see that. That's, that's, that's vision, that's vision, equipping. Y'all, y'all had 20, Proverbs 29, 18? Look what it says here. It says it's all about vision. Y'all heard this probably a million times, but here again for the one, one, once more. It says where there is no revelation. That's the revealing power of God. Vision is, in some Bibles in King James, you're probably going to get the word vision, and I'll read that in a, in a second. It says, people cast off restraints. In other words, when there is no vision for your life, you will never know your limitations. I had to tell some, some, a group of um, people this week, um, they called me and they said, hey, pastor, we're trying to get you to do this we, because they know how, how we like to do things. And, you know, hey, can you partner with me on this? And I said, um, you know what? I'm at a point in my life that I have to say yes to everything people ask me to do. I said, can I be totally honest with you? I don't think that what you're asking me to do lines up with the vision of my church. I said, I don't mean any disrespect. I just want you to respect that I got instructions and what I just heard you say may not be what I believe that we're supposed to be doing. And he said, you know what, Pastor? That's a good way of turning me down. <laughs> he said, but I got nothing but respect for it. I said, glory to God. That was my hope, that you would respect what God has already shown me. That just because you see something on me, that's what I'm supposed to be following. See, and the reason why I tell you that, it says when, you, when there's no vision, you are cast off. You, don't know, you, won't, you won't know what to do. You'll be doing everything and doing nothing at the same time. No vision. That's why, that's why you'll see people that say, I'm trying this now. I'm trying this now. You're like, well, you've been trying the same thing. And I have not seen any, what, progression yet. Because you haven't learned how to have restraint. And let me tell you something. When you're birthing something, can I be totally honest with you? You're glad for anybody that will come. Can I be? You don't care if they left their last church. You don't care if they mad. You just care that somebody there. If you start a a, a restaurant, you don't care if they left Red Lobster or Chili's to come over and eat at your restaurant. You just didn't know how big of a critic they were. (laughs) If you ain't got vision for your restaurant, they'll come in and change your recipe. Y'all hear nothing. Oh, this is how I think you should be. Based upon a lad, and you have no restraint, you have no boundaries. You won't believe how many people walk up, uh, walked away from this church. He said, "Hey, don't listen to me." <laughs> he think he, I, I'm like, no, I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna stand bold on what God told me first, because as soon as I do what you want to do and it don't go your way, you gone. How many know that all y'all can choose another church? I can't. You can get mad at me today and go fellowship somebody and you'll forget all about Rock Face Center. It's on my mind all the time. Day in. Every day. <laughs> See, that's vision. People, oh, I'm, I got you. I'm, 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 no, you, you a teal. <laughs> And so I say this because this is what keeps us, he says, without revelation. People cast off a shirt. He said, but blessed is the one who heeds what instructions? Wisdoms. Somebody shout wisdoms. Wisdom got a name. It gave wisdom such a proper name. Remember I told you a little earlier that vision is wisdom with imagery? It ain't just fantasies, it's imagery with wisdom connected to it. 
And so that's why I love that particular way it says it. But look how the King James, I like the way the King James, y'all like the King James, right? Look what it says, it says, where there is no what? Vision. Who perish? Is that the preacher? The pastor? That's why I told y'all I'm going to follow this to the day I die. To my toes turn up. I committed to it 100% from the day I said, yes, God, I try. It said, but when there's no vision, the people perish. Perishing is literally being alive while you're walking. You remember when, in, every time I see the word perish, it's, it represents not death instantly, but a slow one. When sin entered the world in the beginning, in Genesis, when you read the Bible, um, God told them that if they eat of this fruit, they would surely perish, they would surely die. But when they ate of it, they didn't drop dead. They began to live out that meaningless life. See, when you don't have vision, you'll keep living out meaningless moments. Like every time you get an opportunity, you be like, man, that must slip through my hand again. Why? Because you didn't have any vision for it. Man, I said the wrong thing again because you didn't you visualize yourself shutting up. <laughs> but you saw what it caused the last time in your life. You should have saw better. <laughs> okay, okay. Anybody, anybody ever been in an argument and said to yourself, I can see where this is going? Why? Because you, you decided to imply big. Like, hold on, I see where this is going. So I'm going to decide to go ahead and put some restraint in place here. So because I saw it. Because if I fail to see it, I'm going down that road again. And so I'm going to create perishing moments. Moments that I'm killing off. That I can't get back. And I tell y'all, man, in Fallen this Vision, man, I had some moments, boy. I'm like, God, where are you? What do I do? He says, later on, it says, but he that keepeth the law, this is the law of the Lord, happy. I mean, if, if, if anybody told you that God don't want you happy, they were lying to you. I know he wants you to have joy, but he said, see, happiness is circumstantial. And I thought about it this way because the word happiness comes from the word happenstance where we get the word circumstance. That's why when things are circumstantial in your life, you're either happy or sad. This is what it told me. When I got vision, every circumstance will be good. So I will be happy because my circumstance control my mood. And so when I'm control, I'm not, because when I have vision, I see it the way God said it, and I'm doing what God has purposed, and so the situation don't change my attitude. That's why I can need $100,000 for something and walk around like I already got it. I could be sick in my body and drag this body to church and act like it's okay until it get right, because I say, God, this is what it is. So look what happens in the message. This is what blew me away right here, y'all, and I'm going to keep it moving. It says here in the message, it says, if people... Jesus Christ. If people, this is a big word, this two-letter word here is so massive and so big. It says, if people can't see what God is doing, I'm going to read that one more time real slow. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Okay. This kind of got me. Let me finish reading. It says, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Here's a few contexts of scripture. Always solidifying the text with, with approved versions um, before we paraphrase. Can I get this paraphrase this for a point? I saw something here that I didn't see in the other two. It says here in the first part of this book, it says, if people can't see what who is doing? See, I was concerned when I received vision 
what I needed to do. All this time, I was always like, God, what do I got to do? And now reading this context even clearer, God said, what you do is what I've been doing. That means take your eye off of yourself. How many of vision requires you to remove yourself out of the situation? Because I can always tell you what I would do if I was doing it. That's why I can tell people, say, well, Pat, what you, I say, I can tell you what I would do. People say, what's your opinion on this or that, what this issue is or what that issue is? I say, my stance is, is what God has already said about it. And so what I don't get caught up in is trying to fulfill something that, that God may not be at work in. And so if I focus on what God is doing, that's a visualization of what God has already promised in my life. And so now when God's speaking to your life, you got to develop, if God was doing this, if how would God do this? I can really understand why they wrote that WWJD, what would Jesus do? You know, because a lot of time we can do things the way we would have done it or how we feel like doing it, and it may not be the way God would have done it. But when we do the things that God has purposed us to do the way that he would have done it. How many know you're going to walk around with a blessed life, one that is fulfilling, one that is purpose, one that is manifesting on the regular? Because I'm not doing what everybody else is doing. I'm doing what who's doing. See, that's what happens. When God gives you a vision, he says, this is what I saw you doing. You know how many people have walked up to me and say, well, pastor, they're doing this over there. I'm like, who okay. care? Well, they do this at this church. I'm like, it's all right. I say, this is what we do here. Okay. You know, a prophet said, this is how we do it. Is that a prophet? <laughs> <laughs> this is how we do it. See, because this is how God would have did it. Okay. If God was... And this is how I always say that because we got to say, God, I can't worry about what everybody else is doing. God, I got to see what you're doing because if I don't see what you're doing, I'm going to do things my way and it would never turn out the right way. And so as I looked at this right here, I want to share something real quickly. I'm going to get out of your hair. Just, this is, just like I said, this is a stopping point in the series. I'm in gravity too already, so I, I had to stop here for this. But let me tell you what happens in vision. Vision makes us visible. Somebody shout, vision makes us visible. So when I looked at this vision, with those that have vision, you know, I had somebody that walked up to me yesterday while we was in prayer. He said, man, I wish we were doing what I see you all doing. And I had to be very careful about that comment because I just made that statement about, you know, we don't want to be doing what everybody else is doing, but we see somebody doing something for the kingdom of God. We can't connect to that. We can't be a part of that. But this is what I discovered, is that vision makes us visible. It gives us identity to our efforts. It gives identity to every effort, and then it gives us a cause for coming together. Most of y'all are here, and maybe I'm being facetious. Most of y'all are here because you like something that happened here. Would you say that? Like you're here because you, you may like the children's church. You, you may like me a little bit. You may just love my beautiful wife. You may like the ushers out there. But it was something that identified us that made you want to come together. See, when you follow in vision, every person serving in this ministry, whether in this church or out in public, it makes us as a body of Christ visible. See, when we got a vision for our church, when we do things together, we do it with the same attitude. How many know I never invite people that don't know our vision to come serve with us? Because I could bring somebody in public and say, hey, I get people outside, hey, I see you doing that. Can we come with y'all? I say, have you connected with us? I said, because you can easily not know our attitude and go out and misrepresent us. We stopped working for Toys for Tots. We used to house 18,000 toys a year. You know why I stopped working with them? Because I saw how mean the lady was giving out the toy. She's like, here you go. I said, I say, in this right now. 
I don't care how many toys in that warehouse. Your attitude is wrong. I don't care who we partner with to get a mission accomplished. It doesn't line up properly. <laughs> because it makes us visible. Somebody could assume that's how we all are. All right. All right. That's what makes us common. That's what brings us together. That's what makes our efforts complete. When I brought that kid new cafe together today, I thought they were working so they was out there working together. Why? Because they got a common vision. Anybody ever work with somebody that don't see the same thing you see? You're going to fight against them how many times? All day long. And then you can easily be guilty by association. And be misrepresented. Vision brings us our identity. It says we got a common goal. Somebody should meet you in the street and can tell where you connected to. At least somewhere. They shouldn't think you're a heathen out there. Hey, man. They should be like, hey, you, I, I, you have to be somewhere around people like-minded because you, your attitude is different than anybody else around here. It's an identity. It makes us visible. Vision tells me I have something that is bigger than me, that I saw myself in a great place, and I can't act this way seeing myself there. It's visible. It makes you visible. That's why we're facing it. And all those that are even thinking about it, it makes us a visible entity. Y'all know, man, when we go out into those streets, when we go into the public, man, we go out there, and y'all know we done done all these races, and we ain't need nobody. We ain't need no, our own shirts. We grab their shirts. Y'all know that. We put it on and say, we went Walk for Wishes. We went Breast Cancer of America. We went there because we don't need nobody to recognize us. But how many know it makes the church visible? It says that we don't have to have our name on nothing. We represent God everywhere we go. And just by our attitude, just by our understanding that God is good and we got to be a representation of who God is in the world, vision makes us visible. Because I found out that everything you see, let me tell you all this, man, and I got to go in a second, but everything you see, how many of the devil will try to snatch? Everything. It hasn't been an idea. It hasn't been a thing that's been cast. And, 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 and this would let me tell y'all what happened, man. Let me tell y'all what happened. Somebody almost convinced me not to share what I'm thinking anymore. But hey, Pastor, you know what? You need to not share that out loud because the devil hear you. You know, if, 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 if the devil hear you, he's going he gonna to sabotage your plan. You know, you know when you, you, know you want to do good, evil is present. I said, I don't care where evil have arrived. See, it tells you when, when you want to do good, evil is present. But it never told you that evil defeated you. See, a lot of times we don't took that whole thing and say, evil present, well, you know, that's why I'm going. I didn't realize that because every vision I had, something came against it. Smashed it. And I, I got to the point where I ain't going to say, I'm going to keep this a secret. And God said, that's not what I told you. You share it. He said, I ain't say every detail. <laughs> you know, I heard my pastor say something, man. It, was, it blew my mind. He had some people that took what he knew and went out and did their own thing. He said, I probably touch, taught you everything you know, but I didn't teach you everything I knew. Amen. Anybody ever had to tell your kids that? <laughs> They're trying to get you. And so I had to share this, man, because vision, everything you see, the enemy is trying to come and snatch it out of you. Man, I went to a conference last week, man, and my pastor spent about two hours at the end of that conference. It changed because he it changed the whole sermon because he's so at him. He said, everything you receive this week, I need to be certain that the devil doesn't come and snatch it out of you. And if this thing is not embedded in each and every one of us, as believers, if we don't believe that this is what God purposed us to do, as soon as you have a situation, that's when the enemy come and snatch it out of you. Man, I saw, I saw it. I, I, and he just started saying, well, it ain't what I saw before. You know why? And I'm going to share a few things because you're missing eyesight. Somebody shout eyesight. You're missing a few things. You're missing oversight. Somebody shout oversight. You're also missing hindsight. Somebody shout hindsight. And how many know you're also missing insight, which caused you to not have foresight? And 
I'm going to explain this real quickly to share this because our sight is just, God, I saw something, and that's what I'm going to go after. It's my ability just to perceive it. Because when most of you connected here, you didn't see everything. Matter of fact, some of y'all ain't even seen this whole building yet. How many of y'all have joined in the last couple and ain't seen this whole campus? See how many of them? You don't even know what's all here. You're missing something. You're missing a part of all that all was going on. And let me tell you that you're missing the eyesight because it'll change your insight. You won't believe how many people I walk through our facilities or showing them the ministry things that we do. They say, Pastor, I didn't know all this was happening. And it just changed how I feel about everything. Because I only had a perspective at first, but now I got a little detail, and now I'm walking around with eyesight and insight. Somebody say I got insight. Insight is an accurate understanding. Now I just don't assume, because sometimes, let me be straight honest with you, people can see what's going on in the body of Christ in church and in his ministry and assume that it just happened out of nowhere. But what happens is that I desire to give every disciple or every person that's connected with us the insight and accurate. We don't have it all together, but we're doing the best we can every day to make God proud of us, that we're living out our God-fulfilled purpose, and we need to know that accurately have that understanding. But the awesome thing about this is that we got oversight. Somebody shout oversight. This has been the biggest thing for me in these last 12 years. Oversight, I almost assume as it being that which I've overlooked. Because how many know I haven't always made the best decisions? Amen. I done messed up quite a few things but I had oversight. See, oversight is what God sees even when I overlook things. See, God's oversight of things is saying, I could have got you right there, but I moved you out of the way a little bit. He said, because if you got vision, you still walk with my oversight over you. Even for the things you overlook, even when you miss stuff. How many know I miss things? I didn't know they were going to do that. I didn't know that was going to happen. I wish I had psychic power sometimes. That I can see everything that somebody's going to do. The intentions of their heart. I wish I had that. I wish I had the ability to see you the first time and say, God, show me your whole life. Who you are and what you would do and be one day. I wish that. But God knows. And he's protecting my heart for those things that I didn't see. Because I can see why people walk around with anger and bitterness and hatred from the church and from the body of believers. But when you understand vision, you know that God is still always protecting you from things you see and things you don't see. God sees everything because God is the only one that got your back behind your back. He said, everything that people try to do against you, cause to happen, I saw that before you saw it, and I promise you I'm going to take you through it if you trust what I've shown you. Somebody shout amen to that. But how many know that vision always gives you hindsight? Man, (laughs) if I had more time, but I'd tell you a million things I wish I would have did right. I mean, I gave so much of my time to ministry at times where my family sometimes didn't even see me. I wake up in the morning, bye, come home, they sleep. Many, many moments. Running the football games, can't even make them being late. For the sake of the assumption that I'm doing the ministry. Hindsight is a joker, isn't it? Anybody can look back over your life and say, man, God, I don't live in regret, but you, I'm thank you for keeping me in the, in the midst of that. I'm thankful that my kids turn out all right. Amen, you know? I mean, moments, honestly, y'all, I, I, without being so personal, that we missed. But with that hindsight, it gives me insight to say, God, now I can accurately navigate the path before me. I know those choices that I made or maybe not made such a good one. I know I won't ever do that again. 
I know that because out of those experiences, what God has shown, what he's been as we accurately describe, he's given us foresight. Why? Because when you don't have foresight, you are bound to lose sight. Foresight says, I see it. I see my future now. And I realize that my present actions will not produce what God has purposed. So I pray that every day, y'all, that we understand vision. I didn't want to teach just our vision. But there's an there's a importance of spiritual insight. Spiritual moments where we say to God, it's just not about what I feel and what I think should be happening. But it's God, it's about what you desire to do in my life. And it's my obedience to what you've already shown me. One of the most difficult things in our life is to stay on the course because most Christians, I say it all the time, we live off a picture word association. When we don't like the picture, we usually change the word. We start retwisting what God once said. If God showed me some of the stuff I had to go through these last 12 years, some of the most difficult moments hit our ministry the moment we opened up this church. Some of the most difficult times, challenges. But it did not forsake the vision that God has already declared. That's why when you have vision, you won't ever assume a derailment, a detour, or some type of stop as your point of destination because you already saw what God has purpose and the problems that may come will not prevent you from fulfilling God's purpose in your life. So Rock Face Center, saints of God, those that may be listening, I don't know who will connect to this, but to reiterate the importance of us having spiritual insight and understanding the importance of us having that sight and to see things. You may not understand everything now, but you keep on following the vision. You keep on connecting to what God's purpose you to do. And God, like grandmama used to say, you'll understand it better and better by and by. You know, I declare that today that we'll walk in no lack. God showed me some things. Can I declare even right now that we will experience in the next season of this ministry in every area of your life and the life of this church that we will experience no lack, that every single need will be met in the name of Jesus, that we will see healthy reports. I mean... We have already been crazy enough to believe that COVID did not claim one disciple. We did not claim... Uh, hold on, y'all. Remember back when COVID first started and I sat there March, 20, March 2020 in our pulpit and I, I told y'all I don't care what virus come out God showing us here that we will be here and COVID did not claim one person. I don't give credit to the fact I said that. I saw that. We have people 54 days on ventilators. Pronounced that they were going to come out of it. I'm at restaurants eating and parents calling me and I'm stopping what I'm doing right there and praying in the restaurant, coming in agreement, and they're coming out of it alive. Because we declared before it was over. I didn't wait for it. I ain't came to now and say, look back, y'all. I told y'all. I sat, I sat in March 2020 and told you that COVID would not claim one of you. That I would be here. That if you needed a hug from day one, that you could come and hug me and I promise you I won't get sick. I ain't waiting till the day to tell you that. People thought I was crazy. They called the police on us and everything. But vision ain't waiting till it happened and say, look what happened. That's, 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 that's because you there now. Everybody can say, I saw that. Why you didn't say it when, they, when you first saw it then? Amen. See, when you're walking with spiritual sight, you start saying stuff out loud, writing it down and showing folks before you see it. That's the level that God is taking us to. That everything that we declare, you got to start, to, God, I'm writing a vision for this thing. I'm going to make it clear. I'm going to make it plain. I'm not going to wait for it to play out. I was driving the other day. God told me to build some new apartments. I literally, we were, my, my, my wife said, that's the location. I said, let me go see. I drove by, and God showed me a vision of every unit 
On our property, I have no, it just came in, I said, let's drive and see. I said, no, I'm, I'm going to go see. I cannot, you cannot say that to me without me going and visualizing it. So when you can't afford something, we can give you something you can afford. So I saw that and I visualized it and God said, you got to draw it out now. And God said, the first thing the devil tried to tell me, when the money going to come from? I said, I don't care yet. I ain't even thought about that. When I, when I showed y'all this church, we have a dime. In seven months, we started building. Seven months. From just a thought, put on paper, written out. Do God have a respect to a person? What's in this house is in your house. And I want you to receive that. Excuse me if I'm being a little crazy, but I'm confident that God got something great for us.